Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this video, we're gonna be unboxing a game for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. This is an expansion called Dead of Night. This is published by Fantasy Flight Games, and this is a small box expansion, adding some new investigators, new scenarios to tackle. So without further ado, let's flip this thing over and learn a little bit more about Dead of Night. The Dead of Night expansion requires the Arkham Horror, the board game, 3rd edition, in order to play. It says right on the back of the box, don't fall asleep. In the long hours of the night, while the good people of Arkham sleep behind closed doors and shuttered windows, those with dark purpose and grim intent gather in the shadowed corners and profane halls. Who will stand against the ruthless criminals and twisted cults that seek to advance their own sinister agendas? Dead of Night expands on the core Arkham Horror experience by doubling the number of encounter cards and adding new scenarios and investigators, offering players new ways to interact with the story and the people of Arkham as they struggle to save the city and the world from ancient evils. When you first open up the expansion for Dead of Night, you're going to have a two-sided sheet inside of the box, giving you some flavor text for Dead of Night, the overview, expansion icon, component list, and how to use this expansion with the original base game of the third edition. Flipping this over to the opposite side, you're going to find some rule clarifications for things like the new wanted condition, the elite monsters clarification rules, removing map tiles from play, modifying the mythos cup and also how to put together the monster deck holder besides that it's a pretty straightforward one pager and now we'll dive into all the components behind it and it certainly wouldn't be an Arkham expansion if there wasn't new investigators involved. We've got Diana here. You've got abilities mentioned, how much her focus limit is, her health and sanity, as well as all of her major skills like lore, influence, observation, strength, and will. These change amongst the characters as you go along. And if you flip this card over to the opposite side, it gives you information on the starting possessions as well as how to handle her and her role, as well as some nice flavor text here as well. I really do like the uh, pictures within the this particular version of Arkham Horror. They focus a lot on the artwork and give it like a very central piece on these player boards, which looks really, really nice. Kate is joining the fray in this particular expansion and those are her stat numbers as well as ability. Flipping it over to the opposite side to show you the back. And moving along to the next one, this is Roland Banks. Roland Banks, as we all know, comes from the very beginning core set of Arkham Horror, the LCG. So many of you that are interested in the Arkham Horror universe in terms of Fantasy Flight, very much familiar with Roland from the LCG being the one of the first playable characters uh, from that. So he joins the fray here in Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, flipping it over here to see the backside for him. And next up, we have Skids O'Toole, rounding it out for the investigators added in with this expansion. And we flip it over for the backside for him as well. You can pause the screen any point in time during this unboxing if you want to read what's on screen, but I'm not going to do that as that would delay things. And then we've got the two new scenario cards. Now, in order to avoid spoilers and even just showing the setup of these, I'm just going to show you the front. That's it. You're not going to end up seeing the back to see how these are actually created because that's part of the joy of going through the scenarios so even though they're just mainly set up on the back uh, I still kind of want to keep that secretive so that if you want to pick this up it's kind of a surprise for you when you go ahead to set up that scenario so these are the two different scenarios you'll be dealing with from this Dead of Night expansion. Inside the box, expect to find standees for each of the characters that we just went through, as well as clue tokens, extra clue tokens to go with the game. And on the reverse side, you'll see the art is the exact same for the characters, but you'll notice that the clue tokens have Doom icons on the opposite side, similar to the base game. There's another punch out sheet and this of course is for the card holder and you'll also notice some clue tokens but the difference with these clue tokens is there's a numerical value on these clue tokens for three so that you don't have to use multiple clue tokens you can just use one to represent three going forward and the same thing for doom so that's a nice little addition there that wasn't in the original core game to kind of keep the amount of tokens in play down to a minimum which is just nice for maintenance and of course having the extra card holder is going to be nice as I mentioned earlier on, this symbol up here in the top left is for monsters specifically. You can always expect to find stands to go with the standees in these games, so there's one per new character. 
So let's go ahead first with the small mini cards for this expansion. We're gonna go through a bunch of allies here to start. Again, I'm not going to stop very, very long on any of these, but if you want to pause to read, feel free to do so. Items here, getting into common items. So we just went past allies already. We have some spells here to add into the pile of spells from the base game. And then we have some talents. These are like the special, really awesome cards you can find, usually the result of some of the encounters you'll go through, could potentially land you one of these, which are really awesome. Some more allies and talents mixed in, items, all kinds of good stuff to add into the third edition. Again, anything like this that just bolsters the amount is always a plus. Lots of very cool artwork throughout. One thing with Arkham Horror is the artwork has always been phenomenal, in my opinion. I've always really enjoyed just looking at the art itself. Now we're moving into more items and more talents. There's just so much stuff here. This is actually just a portion of the mini cards. There's more out of shot right now, which I'll show you in a second. We got the condition. So here is the wanted condition. This is new for the third edition. So again, I'm not gonna flip it over to the opposite side because that would spoil things, but you'll see there's multiple of them. They're all the same on the front, but that's because the backs are different in terms of how the wanted condition could potentially turn out for you once it triggers based on the reckoning token down here. So this is the first First pile of mini to of mini cards, I should say, and there's just a few left over. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the monsters that come in this game. Again, mini cards as well. I'm not gonna flip them over to the opposite side. I'll just show you the one side so you get a rough idea of the different creatures coming your way. So some nice, wonderful friends to join us in our adventures in Arkham that want to rip us limb from limb. Uh, but yes, that is one of the major things within uh, the world. And sometimes they're even just straight up mob enforcers, humans that want to actually do something terrible to us. But the majority of them are monsters actual monsters. So there's a bunch of those to add into the pile. And usually they're specific to the scenario that you're playing in almost all cases for the third edition. Got some spells here at the tail end, a talent, an item. Now some of these, if I'm not mistaken, are going to be specific to the characters. So if I flip these over to the opposite side, you'll see there's Skids O'Toole on the back. So these are going to be the starting item cards that, and basically it started as soon as I cut off from the monster. So about here, these cards are all going to relate back to the starting uh, cards or potential items, talents that uh, I get to choose from when using a particular character. So these are going to be really, and it's always really cool to make that choice because sometimes you have and you know an ore choice in there so you might gain a gun but then you have to choose between two different spells so it's always nice to kind of see uh, the option to change up the game from the setup even uh, at the very beginning plus it depends on what actual scenario you're playing so hopefully I gave you a good look at those cards so you can pause the screen if you want to read any of them but uh, always, always really enjoy, as I mentioned, the artwork for all this stuff. So that's gonna cover all the mini cards within the expansion. Next up, let's take a look at this wonderful stack of cards that's really gonna bolster the amount of cards that you have in your third edition core box. So again, you're gonna have monsters, and I'm showing you the backsides, actually, of a number of different cards that are specific uh, to the deck that really draws out the narrative in the game. I really don't wanna spoil much here. So if I showed you these fully, could spoil a lot of things. And of course, even the encounters, I wanna to show you more so how many they're adding in so you can see for uptown they're adding in six cards per different neighborhood within the game which is really going to change things up in terms of rereading or potentially rereading cards some of them actually appear to be maybe a little less so north side here has only four but again it's usually based based on the scenario so there might be a reason that they're bolstering uh, certain neighborhoods more than others uh, because certain scenarios call for one neighborhood over another but it's really nice to see that addition in here because it's going to add all kinds of replayability and that's what you want with this type of game so he's gonna bolster those decks up. And again, I'll flip it over at the end here so we can actually see a couple examples of some of the cards, but I do want to try to avoid spoiling any major. And these cards right here are very specific to the scenario. So they'll have backs specific to the one you're playing. There's two in the box. This is one of them. And then at some point here, likely, unless they both actually use the same one, maybe they do, or it comes in this pile right here. But I'll flip this over and show you quickly a couple cards from this side. So again, you know, if you have to deal with an anomaly, you'll flip it over and deal with it from there based on the gameplay. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that because it could go down a big bunny trail. But uh, here is an example of some of the encounter cards that you could run into, for instance, that are new. Uh, and I won't go through all of them, but just show you a couple of them really quick. So if you want to pause the screen and read them, feel free to do so. 
but I won't go through every single card here. So that's essentially a whole bunch more encounters to add into your game. And then of course you got some ones that are really spoilery because these are specific to the narrative. So I'm just gonna leave those alone. And now to take a look at the final pack of cards inside the expansion, you'll see more cards, newspaper cards to add into the deck, which is great. You got more Uptown cards here to add in. So again, my count in terms of before might be completely off. We got more Streets cards to add in, which is fantastic. So side cards, a number of those, River Town. This is gonna be great in terms of just pumping the numbers up. And there might be a bunch per scenario. I don't know. I'm gonna to have to flip these over to take a look closer up. Some of these sometimes can be specific to this scenario too. East Town. Actually, I might have been looking through the ones that were actually built specifically for the scenario in the last one. I think that's what it was. These are the generic ones, I think, that just bolster the decks as is for every scenario, no matter which one you play. And the ones I showed you earlier, I believe, are specific to the scenarios, those two major scenarios in this box. So hopefully I didn't confuse you too much going through there, as I believed it was the other way around originally. Uh, so again, I'll show you a couple of these uh, because technically in the last section there, you saw some of the major encounters that you come across inside of a scenario. These are the encounters that you will commonly see across any time you play a game of Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. So these are going to really be nice to bolster. And in terms of counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 8 cards going into each neighborhood, an even amount. So that's pretty awesome. Again, just gonna really give a bunch extra, plus the newspapers, which you can rip through quite quickly, but you only, when setting up, actually typically add 13 based on the setup, but that could change based on scenarios you're playing as well. But adding any more newspapers is always gonna throw curve balls into the equation. So it's nice to see those added in. And that is going to conclude the unboxing for Dead of Night, an expansion for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. I really hope this helps you make an informed decision on whether or not this is an expansion you'd like to pick up to add to your Arkham Horror 3rd Edition base game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.